This is 4.2. It's the second week about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and looking at him as a keeper and a preparer of the church. The Holy Spirit's first ministry is to bring forth the church that Jesus Christ paid for. And as we discussed last segment session, he does it through conviction, through changing our hearts. Uh, once a sinner has been brought into a relationship with Jesus by the Holy Spirit, Jesus then baptizes us with the power and grace of the Holy Spirit within. By the Spirit, the church is kept and matured. Matthew 3, verse 11, begins with the words of John the Baptist, I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Every baptism is given by someone. Water baptism is given by another Christian. The Holy Spirit baptism is given by Jesus Christ alone. The ongoing work of the Holy Spirit in our lives includes keeping us in the covenant and preparing us for heaven. We'll look at three scriptures to see that ministry. The first is Philippians 1 verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 and 14. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. And finally, John chapter 6, Jesus tells us, verses 37 through 40, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is the Holy Spirit that keeps the Christians within the fold, overcoming the world, overcoming our flesh, and overcoming the evil one. Question one. Have you experienced your propensity to wander away, only to have God work to bring you closer to him, either by others, your own conscience, or some other means? Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good ple pleasure. The Holy Spirit is how we make progress on our destiny to become more like the man who saved us. In the following sessions, we will discuss the fruit and the manifestations of the Holy Spirit. In a general sense, we can see that the Holy Spirit is the power and grace by which believers grow and are prepared for eternal life. As it says, it is God who works in us to will and to act according to his good purposes. So question two, reflecting on who you've become so far, are you able to see the Holy Spirit's work in bringing you along? Feel free to share how we see it in others too. All Christians are to receive the Holy Spirit. 
We cannot do these things by our own strength and steadfastness. It is by God's grace that we are saved and the same grace that we are kept and that we grow.